Hey robot makers, the Raspberry Pi organization has just launched the Raspberry Pi Pico W. It's a Raspberry Pi Pico with Wi-Fi built in. I'm so excited to show you this. This is nothing short of a game changer. It's a drop-in replacement for the original Raspberry Pi Pico and will work with the existing ecosystem of Pico things and bring Wi-Fi to them simply by dropping in the Pico W. So let's dive straight into the detail. Obviously, Wi-Fi is the main feature of the Pico W, and the Wi-Fi module is a CYW43439. It also has Bluetooth, but the support for this in software is coming later in the year. We haven't got a confirmed date for that yet. So this does have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So here's some of the specs. So the first thing you're probably thinking is, is this a faster chip? Can it do more things? Has it got more cores? It's the exact same chip as the original Raspberry Pi Pico. It's an RP2040. It's got the same 26 GPIO pins in the same order as before. And the onboard Wi-Fi module is designed to provide low cost Wi-Fi. So this provides Wi-Fi 4, which is 802.11n. It's a single band, 2.4 gigahertz. And the Bluetooth module is 5.2 with Bluetooth low energy as well. Some other small changes is that the debug pins have moved from the edge of the board to the middle of the board. Not sure how many people actually use that. There's probably a couple of people at the Raspberry Pi organization that use those. I think everybody else just uses the regular USB connection. So the LED is now accessible by a GPO pin on the Wi-Fi chip, not via GPO25, which it was on the previous model. So if you can see on the code on the right-hand side of the screen there, we import network, we create a variable such as WLAN from the wireless LAN, and then we can turn on the LED simply by doing WLAN.set GPO0 and then set that to true. And if you want to get the current value, we can just to wlan.getgpio0. This means the LED functionality is now moved to the network library. So there's going to be some obvious comparisons with the ESP32. It's going to happen, so why don't we cover it off here? Price-wise, the Raspberry Pi Pico W is launching at £6 UK. So that'll be slightly different depending where you are around the world. And the ESP32, there's some debate about this. Um, you can get them for around £8, but some of them are cheaper. And there are different flavours of the ESP32. There's a single core, there's a dual core, there's a slightly slower version, a faster version, one with more memory, and so on. So I've kind of tried to standardise as much as I can between the two to try and show you the price point difference. So the flash storage on the Pico W is the same as the original Pico. It's two megs and it can offer up to 16 megs on offboard flash. Similar with the ESP32 that's got four megs uh, which is twice the Pico but it also has up to 16 megs offboard flash as well. The Pico W has 26 GPIO pins three of which are ADC and the ESP32 has 36 GPIOs and 18 of them can be used for ADC. The wireless connectivity on the Pico W is 802.11n and on the ESP32 it has a slightly wider range, it can do B, G and N. On the Bluetooth for the Pico W that's got the 5.2 Bluetooth LE standard whereas the ESP32 is using a slightly older version which is 4.2. The difference between the two really is the quality of the documentation and the ecosystem that goes with it. So if you think the ESP32, yes you can probably get them quite a bit cheaper and with the Raspberry Pi Pico W you get in all that ecosystem and the wealth of support from the Raspberry Pi Foundation as well as the Raspberry Pi organization. So there's an awful lot behind the Raspberry Pi Pico, much more I would say than the ESP32. I was lucky enough to get a Raspberry Pi Pico W in the mail and I was thinking what kind of project can I use to showcase its capabilities. So the first thing I've been working on is PyChart. I've recently created PyChart, which brings tiny charts and dashboards to your Pico power displays. This means we can now present data from, say, a weather station connected to my local MQTT broker and display it on the Pico W with the addition of a screen such as the Pimeroni Pico Display 2. I'm using Pimeroni displays with their batteries included MicroPython that has the new Pico graphics library built straight in. These are based on the ST7789 displays. So this is my first demo program. I'm calling this Chart1 and it simply uses the PyChart library that I've created to display on the screen um, some data that I've defined in advance. By using our Raspberry Pi Pico W, we can actually remove this data string. We can bring in real data from our MQTT broker. So what I'm doing here is I'm bringing in chart, which is a new class that I've created. You can see that I'm saying display temperature, which we can see at the top of the screen there. I'm using a red theme. I'm giving the title the same color as the theme, so it's all kind of matching. And there's a grid in the background. And when I switch that grid on, you'll see some extra functionality there to bring this to life. I then set the chart coordinates. So I'm using the full size of the display in this particular case. So I'm just using the full width and height of the display. And then I'm setting the border width. There's a tiny border all the way around that's one pixel wide and the grid is currently set to off. 
and then just grabbing the sensor data, which is actually taking readings from the internal PCOS temperature sensor and then displaying them on the chart. In this next example, we're using a line graph rather than a bar chart uh, to plot out the temperature. You can see there are some little fluctuations in the temperature that it's currently detecting. In this fourth one, we're using data points instead of bar charts or lines. Same kind of data patterns before, but just displayed slightly differently. We can, of course, have a mixture of all those as well. So this one has labels so we can actually see what the temperature is. It's quite small to see on screen there, but that's actually displaying the actual value of the temperature. So I've also made this chart so you can display multiple charts on a dashboard and it will automatically resize depending on how many charts you add to it. So if you add two columns worth, it can split the screen into four and display all four quadrants at the same time. You can see that we've got the little grid on the background. We have a mixture of line charts, bar charts, and data points. And the air quality sensor on the right hand side there is just currently showing some random data. But we can now plug this into the Raspberry Pi Pico W and grab some real data from our MQTT broker. So I want to show you just how easy it is to connect to Wi-Fi using the new Pico W. So I've got some code here in Thony. So the first thing we need to do is import network. That brings in all the network functionality, the Wi-Fi connectivity and so on, just by bringing in that module. Uh, I've then created a new file that I've called secret and in there I've got an SSID and a password. Now if we look inside the secret, the intention is you store this on your Pico and you don't save this anywhere else uh, like GitHub, you keep this completely secret. So if you're using Git, you can even save this file name in the git ignore file. So in here we've got uh, an SSID variable, so in there that's where you put your Wi-Fi name and then the password is whatever your Wi-Fi password is as well. So we can keep that nice and secret. So we're bringing those variables in, then we're going to set up our Wi-Fi, so we need to create a variable to represent our wireless network connection so I'm calling this WLAN and WLAN equals network dot WLAN network and that's the interface. We're then setting active to true and then we're connecting using our SSID and password. We're just passing in those variables. We're then going to print out the message that says connecting to Wi-Fi and we've got a loop here that says while is connected equals false. Do nothing. Pass just means carry on and then once we have got a connection so is connected is true it'll then say connected and then it will print out what the IP config is which includes the IP address of the Pico W and also the router name and the network mask. So let's run this and see what happens. So now you can see it says connecting to Wi-Fi dot 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 connected. There's the IP address of this Pico 130. We have the network mask, we have the router and then the DNS server as well. So we can see there that's how we connect. That's how easy it is to connect to Wi-Fi. Now another demo I talked before about connecting to an MQTT broker, grabbing some values off that. So behind me just around about there is the weather hat from Pimeroni and there's a weather station just outside the robot lab and that's got an anemometer taking readings from the wind speed. It's got a, a rain gauge and it also has a weather vane with the wind direction. So all that information information is fed into my MQTT broker. It just sends it as a big message and we can read that in just using this piece of code here. So we're bringing in the usual things. I'm also bringing in JSON because the data that we get from the weather server is actually uh, in JSON format. I'm bringing in a new variable that I'm calling MQTT server. So that's just the IP address of that. We need a client ID, which is the ID from an MQTT perspective of the thing that's connecting to it. And we need a topic to subscribe to and the topic is weather. We then have a, a bit of code there that means when we actually connect and we subscribe to that topic, if we get a message, it will call this uh, subroutine here. So it'll say weather equals the dictionary, load the JSON object, and then decode it as UTF-8. That looks very complicated if you're not familiar with Python, but it essentially just means launder this data and make it into a nice dictionary. So we can just do things like pressure equals weather, and then we can get the pressure key from our dictionary. So we're getting the temperature, pressure, wind speed, and light, and then we're just printing that out. We've then got some functions, one for connect and subscribe, and one for reconnecting and uh, resetting the machine if, it, if all else fails. And then just like we had before, we're just gonna connect to our Wi-Fi until it's connected, we're just gonna go around that loop. Once it's connected, we can say connected, we can print out the IP config like we did before, and then we can say client equals connect and subscribe, and then we've got another loop that just says check for a message, and then what it will do is it will run that message subroutine that we had at the very top, which was that sub CB, and it'll keep running that every time it gets a new message. So let's run this and see what happens. So it's connected, it, we're connected. The device name is MyPicoW. The IP address is uh, 1.130. And you can see there we're getting some temperature, pressure, wind speed, and light levels as well. And it'll keep updating that, and you'll see they'll very subtly change uh, as new data comes through. And that's all through our Raspberry Pi PicoW using an MQTT server. 
Now, if you want to know more about MQTT, I've mentioned this a few times now, if you've not heard that phrase before, I did a video about this last Sunday. So check out the video that's in the card description above. On this channel, we love the Raspberry Pi Pico and RP2040, and we use it as the first choice on all our robotics projects. The Pico W means we can add wireless control and feedback to our robots simply by swapping out the Pico with the Pico W and making our robots untethered and free to roam around. Sure, you've been able to add Wi-Fi to the Pico, I've even made a video about this before, but the Pico W means it's native and just a single board to work with. For the launch of the Pico W, I created these tiny little stands for Pico Ws to be able to display information on a dashboard. So the Raspberry Pi Pico W can sit nicely on these little 3D printable stands. If you want to grab a copy of them, you can go over to kevsrobots.com and you'll find a link to them there. If we plug in some power we can get up and running with our little dashboard in no time at all and that means we can take data from our MQTT broker from our weather station our environmental sensors and have them all displayed on this tiny little dashboard. So if you're new to the channel and you've not seen my videos before I go live every single Sunday at seven o'clock it's British summer time at the moment so that's seven o'clock GMT plus one and then in the winter months it's just GMT. I also have a website where I put loads of information about various robots that I've created. So check out smilesfan.com or also kevsrobots.com and you can find all kinds of tutorials and write-ups about them, including the STL files for these nice little display stands. And if you want to help support the show, you can also go to buymeacoffee.com slash kevinmacalear and help me pay for some of the equipment and all the hosting costs and streaming software and graphics software. So I hope you enjoyed this short video and I shall see you next time. Bye for now.